What's going on, guys? Hey, guys, what's hey, going on? Help, I'm the it's a filter. Here, boy. <laughs> it was a filter. <laughs> I'm filtering you two out. You filter me out, man. That's I awesome. don't blame you. That was a oh chill filtration gosh. filter, guys. You guys, what's it's always on? funny because right before we go live, we think we have it set, and all of a sudden, no, we, do this, do this, do this. It's like, okay, 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 okay. And then we, we don't think we have it set. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. I'm anyway, fine. welcome to Thursday, Thursday, gentlemen. <laughs> Cheers, cheers to you. all of you. Cheers. cheers to you, gentlemen. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see Thursday. you guys. It's Happy good to see Thursday. you guys. Let's cheers. go see what's going on in the you. chat room, shall we? And see who mm. is all on. You know, it's tonight. weird because I have no idea what that big screen picture was. Uh, you know who could answer well, that well, question? Who, yeah. I bet Dr. Scott could help oh, us out he might. on that one. Mm. He's going to be on later. <laughs> Gotta really? love him. Who we well, got who on tonight? Everybody. So we know Tom's oh, celebrating. Oh my gosh. He's we'll crazy. leave that at that for him to share if Fair he enough. so chooses. <laughs> Bobby J, evening. Nurse Dave's Shaving World. I'm excited. I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. Bobby J. Scotch Damn, down under. I'm so excited. Is that Pointer Rogers? Sisters? Yeah, it is. That was Nurse Dave. Alejandro's on. Uh, DB is she. Hey, Dina. Oh, uh, we got uh, somebody so, from Germany. So, so somebody from uh, Germany, which, by the way, is also an administrator on the Loggable Appreciation Society Hogan Facebook Bear. group. Um, Hoagie works hard on it, and he's always putting time. I appreciate that, Hoagie. Yeah. Uh, who else we got? Germans here. Look Garrett at all the Germans green there. members we have yeah. out there. That's yeah, growing too. The green crew is growing. The green That's crew exciting. is growing. That is Gerben, Bob, Gerben. George, Scotch on wow, the body. Come on. I do want to call out Gerben. It's three or four in the morning four. there. And then is did you say it's that? almost five a.m. now? Yeah. Well, cheers. Thanks that, for hanging that's out. That's early. Us. Thanks. It is early. Um, cheers. Appreciate it. Who else do we have? Tom I I'm shocked. I, I haven't heard from Bob. I haven't got a text from that guy in like a week. You working that hard, Bob? You know who I talked to no. today? He said he was going to make it tonight, too. KB. We'll see about uh, that. We'll see about that. Yeah. We'll see about I, I saw Trooper him. Henry. There he is. We saw him earlier. Yeah. Brianne's yeah, got yeah. the right idea. That's what I have in my glass, and Ooh. I believe I described so, it the same way. Sunday and Bree said they had the same two bottles sitting out. Well, then. That, that is it, crazy. It, it, how funny is Great that? Minds. Great minds. George is ready to crack that bottle. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's, guys, let's spend... Let's spend um, Mark Rainer's on. Mark oh, cheers, Rainer. man. Mark, good to see you. Good, good to see you, Mark. Hoagie, speaking of getting up early. I know. Man, that guy Jim, is... Jim, no bourbon. <laughs> Come on, man. So do we know where Gerben is? A Amster Amsterdam. Amsterdam. He's in Amsterdam. Yeah. Amsterdam, yeah. That's about the same time. Zach Zonner's Andrews. <laughs> no, Brianna. All right. Uh, uh, like did it. you show it? Uh, yeah, you did. Uh, <laughs> well, we have a... Uh, <laughs> she, she can say it because she's like, Mike, you better show that. <laughs> uh, so speaking of this bottle, the Caledonia Edra Dower, 12-year-old. So Mike uh, and I were at Vine Table back when, I think it was... I think it was John Glacier and was in town, and we, we were talking about this, and um, he said this is a bottle to get. I bought it, and, and I, I enjoyed it, but I didn't really go off the handle like I thought he thought I, would go, I was going to. And so it's sat. I've shared it with a bunch of people. I've gone back to it a few times, and I, I still like it. I have a glass tonight. I promised on Discord this week. We were chatting on Discord, and I'm like, I'll do it again. I'll have another glass of it. It's been a while. And I said to you guys earlier, I had a glass, and it, it smells wonderful. And a first sip is great, but then I feel like there's an empty hole of sherry that's missing that I, I thought was in there. It's not in there. I still, I, I enjoy it, but it's not really giving me everything I was wanting. I mean, you guys, I think, are completely yeah. different. It's all leathery and, no. Oh, yeah. I mean, I like it. I, I will say I wish it had a little more oomph, and I think that's because it's 46 ABV. I think if it was a little bit higher ABV, I'd be a little bit more into this glass. Because it's got a lot of stuff in there, but it's it just feels like a, a little bit, not as, not the depth that I really am looking for. Like, you take a sniff of it, and you're like, man, this it smells great. And you get in there, and it, it's it's got a good palate, but it just kind of, the finish is shorter than you would think it would be, and it's just not quite as rich as I would think it would be. Do we know the maturation? Mm -mm. I'm sure. I'm sure Michael does, but, it, but I just had another sip, and it's like, oh, there it is, there it is, and then it goes, it goes so quick that you're you're missing out. Like you've had some really nice Oloroso and or PX cast stuff, and it just rolls. it just rolls yeah. right, yeah. and this thing hits me and goes, Ehh. yeah, the flat so, lines. The, the finish is short. I I think it's definitely Edredauer. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I don't I don't you know, I taste it. I'm like, it's definitely got the Edredauer signature. 
it is a I get more PX than anything. I get a, a lighter sherry. I don't know. I, I like it. It's great. It's not the best that I've ever had. I'll give you that right. much. Fair enough. But Wheelhouse likes enough. it. Wheelhouse likes <laughs> it. Go on, man. Give that one to, to James. <laughs> Undercover judger. <laughs> and SoCal Tram Tram's in his house. Nice, nice. Greg Lewis is in too. Man, we got a lot of people on tonight. Yeah, That's so good, we're going to do some stuff. Richard wants to know where do we get this guitar pick? Well, a good friend in the neighborhood got it for me when I was building the bar. And they said they found it at some some furniture shop and said, hey, this needs to go on Drew's bar. And I'm like, damn right. Yep. <laughs> right. So it's been sitting here ever since and it, it's just kind That's of cool. part of my song. Somebody posted on our Facebook a private message to us that they wanted to know where that came from. And we've gotten two of those kind of messages like, in the last week. Oh, Somebody somewhere. wanted to know what the really? large glasses yeah. that we used, you know, the larger... Uh, and, you know, ironically, somebody answered it. Was it you? Mm -hmm. Somebody answered what it is. It's Ta a tailored milestone. Tailored milestone. Yeah. They're discontinued. Oh, really? I searched all over and I couldn't find them. Everywhere I went, unavailable. It's made in China. But then we also of had course. somebody ask a question about where that came from. So it's kind of cool That's to good, see people man. paying attention to different right, things right. on the show. And not just the bottles. The description <laughs> says, wood guitar pick, wall decor. There you go. So go Google search My that. guess is like... Probably like um, home home goods or um, Pier One or something. Yeah, yeah, something, something, like, something that. like that. I bet if Amazon has one. It's perfect for your bar. Hobby Lobby might have it, something like that. For anybody that doesn't Lobby know, you, you know, yeah. you've got a lot of history and family like, history like that comes from. History. Right, you, that's where your family yep. comes from. So it, it, the original idea was for to make this more of a pub in English. So they got this. Plus, it was in music. I'm obviously music background, so they thought it was perfect for me. So just a wee bit. We bet. Anyway, he know guys. How to play guitar, but anyway. <clears throat> so interesting bottle. But <laughs> tonight's topics interesting. Mike says it's Oloroso. I said I smelled PX. I thought it was Oloroso. <laughs> I don't. Am, I, am I pouring something different, or are we going to do this? We're going to do talking this. about no, we're, 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 you, we're, you, you can have something else if you want. Well, you have to have a Glenfiddich. Yeah. yeah, we got to get through Glenfiddich because it, okay, well, I mean that was the review, right? Right. So let's somebody should push the button and tell us what we're on now. Well, it's already on. You just can't I see it. I can't see it. I can't see it. It's right there. I don't know what's going on. Good for Dummies, the beginner's, beginner's guide. guide. <laughs> there we go. All, <laughs> All right. right, so there you go. So I'll let's you talk go. about so, Glenn Fittick well, for Dummies. Well, let's talk about the series. So Glenn Fittick for Dummies is one of our kind of four Dummies series. We've done McAllen. We've done Glenn Morangi. Is this the third one? No, we did Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker, yeah. Did we do McAllen? Balvenie yet? Glenn Morangi. We have not done Balvenie yet. So... We've done a few different ones where it's just the whole time. We try to cover the whole series of that, that distillery, at least their core range. We Sometimes you get into the eclectic you know, bottles, it's not really fair. But this, this one, the first thing I learned was that we had reviewed Glenn Fittick. Well, yeah, right? It was like four years into this, five years into this, and we still have an done Glenn Fittick 12. That was the eye opener. Uh, Quite next, surprisingly, next week we're going to do Johnny Walker Black. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, and so, so the thing about it is that the beauty of these uh, kind of reviews is it, if for, for the beginner, it's a good way to kind of understand what you're going to get and what you're going to pay for as you go through the lineup. And, you know, with uh, Glen uh, Moe, they sell with the base, the realize with this, it's just kind of a, a further development of their line as you go older. And so that's, that's, inf that's good to know that if you don't like the 12... If, I mean, if 12 is really bad for you, you you may not like the 15 or the 18 because it's kind of more of the same. I mean, there's, there's more intensity to them, but if, if the flavors are off, then maybe that's not what it's you want. It's the style. Unless like those, older, style those older ones are a different maturation. You know, if it's a, a night and day maturation difference, then, then maybe try the other one. But you're yeah. right. You know, most of these distilleries, this is their core. Like, Glenmo's the same way. 10 is in every. It starts with the, the original. 10. Yeah. Right. I mean, and this has been around for... 18, ages. Yeah, what, 64 or something? You looked it up in that one. I need to rinse this, this <laughs> heavy, yeah, <laughs> this heavy one out. I want to try just a, a little sip of it. It's but nice. I learned something it's too, light. and just and another thing too is that they they've got like, not just you know five or six or seven bottles. They've got a ton of bottles. And the whole yeah. age of it was age of extinction. Age of discovery. discovery. <laughs> discovery. <laughs> age of extinction. Might as well be because we can't Mark, find the ones we, we want. <laughs> Oh, shit. Age of there, didn't I? It's right before before the Thank you. Optimus Prime. So um, I, I mean, I, I found it informative, and I listened to the podcast this week because I, I like to go back and listen. I mean, normally I don't have time to watch the videos. Don't tell Drew, 
But I, I like to go and listen to it on the podcast because uh, I, I consume a lot of media on podcasts, and it, I found it to be a very enjoyable podcast. It okay. walked kind of Could through the entire along? line. Yeah, okay. absolutely. I mean, because it was it was more of a a verbal guide through the lineup, which I think all all of our four dummies series have been, and uh, you know, it, it was fun. You know, it got at least enough information that you could follow along and decide if you want to pick up a bottle or not. To me, the, the the cool thing about those four dummy series, honestly, is it really kind of gives across the message of why we started doing this in the first place. I remember when we first started going in the liquor store saying, we got to get some bottles ready. We didn't know a damn and thing. And I'd go in there and I'd be, I'd be like, I'd walk down the aisle at least a dozen times going, I, 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 don't, where do I, start? I don't know where to go. And right. And, and this, this series, I'm hoping, will help. You know, some people that are maybe starting with this or even getting into it. And I mean, hell, when we did the McAllen one, I learned a ton. I didn't know anything. Oh my God. The, just the way they group their, their lineup, right. right? So I had no idea until you did the research and you're like, oh, there is a little method to this madness, right? Yep. Glenn Fittick's even worse. I mean, you go to Glenn Fittick's website, man, they got a shit oh, ton of all over the place. Oh, it's tough. Man. It, it's it's tough. So, the, the best yeah. way to learn something is to prepare to teach it. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's That's asking us to do a Glendronic series for dummies. Oh, um, okay. Well, if you really want one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, well, look, we will need some delivered to us. We'll need the 21 and the 21. That, will, that might be, be a little bit interesting because we're going to have to bring in oh. the discussion of the, the closing and, and how... That'd be a fun one, though. Right. Um, we could. It might be a little bit longer. I mean, uh, it'd be fun. It'd it's be good. Be a, we know we'd enjoy it. <laughs> the thing is, we, we, would probably, we probably should only review the current issue not the older issue it's gonna be hard to find some of those bottles yeah the older versions aren't around anymore I mean, we know a guy right I mean, a couple <laughs> guys. but yeah i'm just saying yeah but ultimately people who see that video can't get those either so so mike is saying that uh, vine and table had that glendro cast drink batch eight for 60 bucks didn't you kill a bottle of that i did is it's it worth 60 it was, bucks it was yeah absolutely <laughs> it was worth 60 bucks. For 60 oh, bucks, yeah. for sure. Can we get somebody to deliver one to us? Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Glenn Fittick 12 real quick. You guys still need to officially do a Glenn Dronick 21? No. No, we don't. We've done it, right? No. Yes, we have. Of course, we thought we did this. Come on, man. Some might call All us right. out. I, let, me do the re- let me do the research. Go on Go on the video. I'm, I'm pretty sure we I'd did. I'd be shocked. I can't believe See, I see a Glendron. Uh, so he. <laughs> well, I know we got one up we, there. We poured a little bit of that earlier. So what? No, we didn't. Shush. <laughs> we did killed you? mine. I brought my bottle over here last time. Well, and we, it did got, have, we, we had a little glass when when Tom opened his fancy glass. Couldn't, mm. couldn't resist it, but. Um, so Cal, I appreciate that. That it is nice. I've got a bottle. It's just not open yet. You guys believe that? No. Glendro, batch eight. I mean. I'm not going to call you a liar. <laughs> you damn know. Well, I, of course I do. <laughs> he got I, his. I just, I just don't know if it's open or not. <laughs> it's not open. I don't, think, uh, not open. I don't think we've done the 21. Really? No. Well, help bring it down. Let's do a review. Well, <laughs> we're, we're going to have to do Glendro for dummies then. Well, you have to go buy right. a bunch of bottles. I guess we're, hey, Glendronic 21 Parliament is on the hot seat. You guys can wreck that. It's on deck. Steve A just confirmed it as well. So. Wow. Good. Well, I, how can that be? Man, you know what? We need somebody to go through our list and be like, how could you not have done so this bottle? These either? are going to be two two ones. Next time we do like, reviews, uh, we got to do these. Going to go 21. It's a shame, too, because I've killed at least two bottles of Parliament in my base. <laughs> And maybe that one giant leap. Have we reviewed that one yet? We have. We, we have actually, not. I think we did. No, didn't we you didn't. bring it over? Mark? No, no, I, I don't what? see it on here at all. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? We're going to start uh, writing Andrew's bar. <laughs> I, well, you're not going to get much. I was going to say. None of the wheelhouse is over there. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, well, we'll have to put uh, Glendro for Dummies on the list then. I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm down with that, man. Well, I think sure. we need to do a 21 review. Yeah, the good sure. news is, is the 21 on the shelves is just getting better for a few more years. Yep. 2022 is the year that it's the peak, and then, then we'll see what happens. Unfortunately, the time has passed for the Allardyce. I, I bet it's still not horrible. Oh, you know well, I mean? I mean the 18, the the um, yeah, the but Berry this is true, bad. Stephen. We have killed bottles and been like. We didn't get a review there? Yeah, we've <laughs> done that. There's been a lot of those, man. <laughs> Send a drink. Nah, just drink it. Okay. This is really good. We're going to drink all of it right now. Um, it happens. 
Oh, well. <laughs> the, the Glenn Droink, though, I think is going to be something we need to think about because there's going to be some interesting conversations with that series. Yeah. Which especially with all the, the stuff, different years on the labels. That's going to take a whiteboard and some mapping so, to get right. there. Right. To finish this 12 up, though, man, I just get vanilla sweetness. I, I There's a yep. lot of sweetness yep. in there. It's And, and some malty goodness. Yeah. Like it's, it's a uh, nice bottle, man. It is. I, I don't have any problems with this glass. So, Leanne, uh, Scotch on the Bayou made a comment way up there. She, you know, the thing about doing this is... It's on every bar. You're going to walk into yeah, a bar. If sure. they've got a bottle of scotch, they got a bottle of Glenfiddich 12. Yep. You know, so you can find I know a barbecue it. place with this on it right now. And <laughs> so, you know, way yeah. back when we did one of those reviews where it was like, you know, you walk into the hotel bar and what do you get? You know, I mean, there are some that are... I'll order this. Enjoyable, right. <clears throat> Absolutely order this. Sure. So, there you go. There you go. All right, so um, what's good. this other bottle? Who's, who's SMWS? All right, so here's the story. Them? Everybody else that's got a bottle, get ready. We're going to do this together. Um, SMWS had a lottery for their latest <coughs> U.S. exclusive. This bottle was picked by a committee. Was it uh, us? American Members USA exclusive cast um, by a tasting panel. We weren't included. Maybe we will be in the future. We're not, we're trying. We're working on it. Um, this is Society Cask thirty one one one. So one eleven. It is a Glenrothes. I swear that guy's got perfect timing. Why? Ben, ben just stepped in. Ben, there it is. Peachwood. Peach All oh, right. Peach this is the Peachwood peach edition. We're doing this. We needed you here anyway. So Ben, tell us a little bit more about who is the tasting panel, Ben? Who selected this bottle? Are you on that panel? I'm sure it is. He's got. Uh, it. He might be. One of 550. I'm so excited for this. So there was a lottery. Open it, brother. Right there on. was a lottery. Um, everybody and their mother uh, put their name in for it. Um, several people on, on the show tonight got picked. I happened to get picked the day after. So the first day I didn't. Somebody obviously didn't claim their prize. And so I got picked on, on the second round. And we had to have a bottle. So... We snatched one up and thought, you know, we got to do a review of this one. We don't do reviews of all of our SMWS bottles. It's kind of hard when they're single cask. You know, you do a review of a bottle, it's gone. But this is oh, a U.S. exclusive. Oh. Um, oh, my God. Look at it. Dude, so the cork alone we've been excited. We've got a 12-year-old, 64.6% ABV. The name of it is <laughs> Inferno <laughs> Toffee Damn, Pudding. Man. So, George, TikTok, the cork hey, is about our, to pop. I know George had a bottle of it. Um, who else has got a bottle that's getting ready? I think Sunday evening scotch. Mike Porter's getting ready to pop a bottle. And Bree. There we go. And Ben, 150 U.S. members last year. 150 U.S. members, man. I can tell you right now, just based on the cork alone, that's I about all of them, freaking right? love this bottle. <laughs> What's 150 U.S. members last year? That's how many members that's in the SMWS that, 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 No, that's who picked it. By around 100. Oh, okay. What do you think? I think it smells I think amazing. she needs to, to sit for just a, a wee yeah. bit for a second. Let, look at the color on that beauty. I smell, do I smell barbecue? No, not pita. So, you know what I think about this? It smells sweet and lovely. But it also no. smells like, say that again. <laughs> right. I'm going <laughs> to knock you out, right? <laughs> oh, my god! Just say it one more time. <laughs> oh, man. There's, there's a punch in this. And there's a deep, le I mean, like, so, old, like, that, grandpa's leather. How many people got a bottle of this on the show tonight that are that are on the chat right now? Because uh, I know there were a lot of people that put in for the lottery, and I know some people didn't get it. Um so Ooh. I'm one of those weird guys with cake and ice cream that like to get the ice cream and cake and oh, mix man, it together. Get yeah. And you get that and a little put, dirty. A little bit of caramel on this. Man, that's exactly what that first initial smell was. It's like just So what is the creamy what's the goodness. maturation on What's this? the maturation on it? Ben, talk to us. Give us the details, the skinny. That's one thing I noticed about the when they do these exclusive bottlings like this, you don't get a write up like you do on a typical SMWS bottle where it gives you a little more on what to expect. You just yeah. um, you get a cool picture, but you don't get some crafty write up with that we all enjoy to read anyway, right? It smells hot. Um, it does smell hot. I can see the the toffee cake. So I got like a, my a, a light oh, strawberry yeah, note on it. It's got some fruit on there. Yeah, I'm getting a little cake. The pudding, I guess, is the. I guess it's the. Uh, wow, bread man, pudding. it's getting hot now in the nostrils. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was it's thinking flan. Um, like it has the a, caramel, yeah, vanilla. Yeah. 
Yeah, flan. <laughs> I'm not sure. Faulty <laughs> Alty got his Monday correct at Tuesday. <laughs> hey man, I'm not. I'm not fully mad at matured you. and first fill Olo. Mm-hmm. He's McLovin' it. Oh my gosh, this smells so So there's going to be a spicy note to it? Oh, it's got spice. Spice and leather. Oh, oh. Like old tobacco. Huh. <laughs> yeah, but definitely tobacco. Oh, and the tobacco comes out more oh on the God. end. Oh, that's great. Holy shit, it pops tobacco. <laughs> you know that it's oh, like you have man, a cigar in your mouth. An oh, that's, cigar. That's really good. With the like with the spicy oh notes to it. Oh my gosh. That's great, wow, man. It's that really is good. Once the bird pulls away. Take a sip. Take it a is. Sip. It's like sucking on a drunk okay, cigar. This is an epic bottle. Wow. That's really good. Really, really good. I, I think the water is going to explode this thing up. Like just Yeah, I was gonna say now now the finish though, the long finish. It, wow. it, it starts to dig that. It's yeah. not bad. It's not bad. It's, it's salty. Oh, a nice little briny quality at the end. Mm. I'm not getting so, dry. I'm getting more Everyone has a good earth. question. It, it's Glen Rothis, and you know that he has not been impressed with Glen Rothis stuff. What makes this one good? It's earthy on the end. I'm not sure I like the, the finish as much. I would say, and I'll agree with you, although I, we've had some Glen Rothis that was, that was good, it's and we've had some so that was, it's good. a crapshoot. Nah, from that distillery honestly, sometimes. I think your your distillery bottles that are on the lower end tend to just be distillery bottles on the lower end. Yep. But there are some Glen Rothes out there. There was a store pick in Kansas that the test dummies had that. That was mind blowing. I've got a couple. We've had of, a couple um, that were just right. really I've only a, had one bottle I didn't like. Every, I've loved everything else I've had. There's been that. a few that have come through SMWS. Yes. I, there's definitely been some that have some been amazing ones. very good. This one definitely is more earthy. The tobacco note is extremely strong on Way it. Way tight, though. Um, it is. It's yeah. 64. I want to sit this. Uh, and I, it's going to need a little bit of water to see what happens. But You um, could just sip on this one glass for the rest of the night. If you don't put water on it. I don't, I don't know. We could also go through half a bottle tonight. Well, well see, my, my concern with this is it's, it's kind of astringent. Oh. It's dry. There's not like rich ruby fruits and sweetness in it. it. It is very. It's like a dessert. Well, no, I don't think it's it's not that sweet. Really? It, it, I, I'm getting more of a. So ooh, very true, Ben. I I, <laughs> I can agree to you on that. The Dark indie bottles of these are much different than their distillery bottlings. Let the man finish. I'm sorry, I was reading. Like black comment. black tea. Sure. I'm not. It's not. It's not real sweet on my palate. Are you getting sweetness on uh, it? No, not as much. I mean, it's, I don't want to call it like sugar sweet. It's almost like like blackstrap molasses sweet, it where it's got that like yeah. earthy, bitter quality to yes. it, but it's got some of the sweetness or like a black but, licorice. It, yeah. I don't get the yeah, licorice what, part. What is but, that? But it's, so it's got a, a bitter it's quality got to Black it. coffee, leather, dark chocolate, burnt yep. toast. Yep. Yeah, it does have that licorice it's type. Like, a little burnt, waxy, whatever that is. It's, it's got the more earthy, caramelized, carbony type. Carbony. Interesting. I mean, this, there's a lot going on in this, actually. I'm, I'm going to put some water on Have you guys ever, like, taken a, a handful of, like, straw or, or fresh green straw and, and like, broke and smelled the stock? Like, yeah. I, I get, like, a stocky smell on it a little bit. But then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I get this. It starts to go black tea, like you said, and then it's just, like, black a punch good. of freaking tobacco leaf right in your mouth. You're like, holy shit, that's really I'm not so getting as I much the, of the, the tobacco now. That first sip, though, was totally, on the like, nose I get. like, munching on a cigar. So you think that's a combination of the spice and the alcohol kind of doing that, yeah. though? Yeah, the no the nose. I'm not getting anymore. as much now. So, George, what do you get on the be. nose? Talk to me on your nose here. And and I know Sunday, uh, Mike Porter, have you opened this yet? Delicious. I can this see the delicious. tobacco earthiness for sure. Black coffee, leather, dark chocolate, burnt toast, like really dark berry jam. I'm not getting burnt toast. I'll give you the, the black coffee and leather. Dark chocolate, not so much. <laughs> if maybe it's burnt toast, maybe? it's burnt. It, I mean, it's that's, burnt, burnt. That's a great comment. Which one? <laughs> If Jesus was a chocolatier, this is what he would make. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> amen. So this, this is interesting because it's, it's it, I, I would say this is more on the bitter leather side rather than the sweet Oloroso side. Am I wrong? 
I'm not getting the vanillas and the cinnamons and some of those other lighter um, ru ru rubies that you can get from a, an Oloroso. This is more on the heavily oxidized Oloroso, where it's just almost spent and burnt. I'm getting this. The, I'm getting the Spanish oak. And the, yeah. I'm getting that spicy note. Are you not getting that? No, I, I'm totally getting that, especially with some water now. Wow. I'm going to need a little more water. I don't know. It, I, I see your point. It's not Man, like... you didn't touch that. It's a different type of sweet. I touched it, it enough. It's, yeah. not, it's not like... I touched it's, it enough. Uh, correct. You know, you know, like, um, if you've ever had uh, candy from India, it's no. not like American <laughs> candy. So, so when oh, I, when, sure. When, sure. I, when, okay. I, when I worked at an in engineering lab in college, there are some um, people from India that their family would send them uh, the candies. And they're, they're not American candy sweet. They're sweet... But they also have all these other flavors in them that, that make them a candy. And there's some a little bit of sweetness to them, but they're not sickly like raisins and plum sweet. It's a different kind. And I think that's maybe what this is. It's a it's more of a, a bittersweet. It's getting sweeter with water. It, it is that. Ooh, but shoo. 64 can take a hit. I think I'm down <laughs> to about 60. Cody <laughs> uh, 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 wants to know any sulfur? <laughs> no. No. No? Negative on the sulfur. None here. But, I, um... Okay, the, okay. I, I, Sunday, I just I just got your burnt toast. Right there. The first time. With, with, with the water. As you had the water, yeah. Just, and, and, it's, and it's right there at the end, finish. So I was getting something burnt. He said burnt toast, and I was thinking if it's burnt, I mean it's burnt sugar. It's or burnt. It's fried. <laughs> it's fried. It's fried. So I've put enough water in to get down to probably high forties now. Ooh, she's and softening up really nice. It is. It's turning more into molasses now. It's, no, it's there's no got, sulfur. No, it. I still don't get like sugary sweet notes in this though. I mean, it's it's got sweet, but it's. It's yeah. not overblown like a like a dessert or a candy. It's very subtle. Um, I'm trying to think of a good descriptor for it. it, it but it's it, it almost like savory cheesecake. You ever had a savory cheesecake? No. It's got yeah. like so it's got like some sugar in it, but just a hint of sugar, and then it's got other things in there that. I mean, it's still a cheesecake, so it's got the cheese, but it's not sweet. And this reminds me of. Something yeah, like I mean, that. That's just set, a hint of sugar. Sunday evening scotch may have something where it's kind of like burnt fruit. Mm. It's kind of, kind of that. See, I, I will say this is a really uh, complex whiskey. So there we go. So there's a lot to that's it. A home run there. There's a lot to it, and it does take some time to. It's it's a we it's a weird combination though. I really enjoy it because I I disagree. It does have a sweet layer, but it's a sugar sweet. Not it's, there's no like. Vanilla, caramel, and then it's like a sugar sweet, then a, then a big poofiness of oloroso or maple or something going on. I'm not getting the but, but, but that's not sweet at all. It's that's that's like there's like no sugar to that part at all. And then and then it switches yeah. involves into this tobacco black tea kind of and then turns into a finish of like a burnt or something. And it's it's really kind of a neat, but that sh there is a, like a, a sweet substance to it, but very thin at the very beginning. It's almost like a like a bread pudding that that doesn't have much sugar in it. It's relying on like, like the top part, plum, like like deep rich, like raisins and figs and stuff like that to kind of yeah, add the sweetness to it. So there's a layer of sweetness, but it's not like overblown. Yeah. Uh, but there's still the that burnt, oh, oxidized something or other in there, and and the leather is pronounced still, even with a bunch of water in there, it's still there. Man, I almost for you get guys. like a wheat smell. So the nose, the yeah. nose though is different from the palate. Now with the water I have, the nose to me still smells like that nice vanilla or nice caramel cake and stuff. But yep. the palate, but the palate is not that at all. Yeah, I could see the toffee on the nose. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I will say this is probably one of those bottles that you just sit with for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I. And there, and there are a lot of S and Ws that I love. To just pour a glass and drink the glass, and it's just good. I don't have to overthink it. But this one, I feel like you kind of want to sit with for a little bit. It's got a lot of stuff going on. I think that's fun, though. I honestly enjoy a glass that's going to change over time and, and give me some. It's almost like 
it's a journey. Just one dram is a journey. You know, I'm going to explore this thing. Very yep. similar in cigars, right? Yep. You know, that first 30 or cigar is always going to be different than that second third and that third. third. You're, there's, you, it's, there's different flavor yep. profiles while you smoke that cigar. It's almost yep. the same thing with this. There's a, the, the flavor just keeps maturing. Yeah. I mean, up front, when I took the first sip, there was that, like, bold, spicy note with the, with the full tobacco. Like, it was full on. I mean, it was almost shocking. Was. And now I'm getting more into, you know, with a little bit of water and a little bit of thyme, there's, there's more sweet notes coming out, a little bit of vanilla. I mean, it's, it's nice. I enjoy this one. So I think we're all over the place. So I think it's interesting yeah. because this is really scratching our heads from different complexities, from the nose to the palate, sweet to non-sweet to tobacco. It has a lot going on. So yes. I, but, but is it something that you guys would like to drink? Like, if, um, would you like, hey, yeah, give me a glass of that. I would love to have that. Or is it almost too complex? Uh, well, I think it is, but I, I mean, I'm a mood drinker, so I'm going to pick this when I've got time to sit and actually appreciate it. First fill yeah. Oloroso, yeah. Alejandro. This isn't going to be one that I just grab off the shelf just, and I'm just like talking to people and I'm, you almost need to pay attention to this glass. It almost demands it. It does. So. Yeah, this is one that it, it is. So while my comments aren't necessarily going for this glass, it's not my favorite glass. There's a lot to it. I think it deserves some time. It deserves time opened up in I the was bottle. just going to say, let's see what happens. And it, I think it could be really interesting. I, I, I know it's interesting. It's not my favorite right now, but it's definitely worth considering and worth working for. Go back to the comments real quick. There was someone that asked a question yeah. about, about membership. So, uh, uh, Jamie, uh, consider joining the club. Shipping costs seem expensive. I'm not going to lie to you. They are expensive. Yes, they are. Um, and, and I've beat Ben up over it, and Ben's like, you know, the shipping is what it is. Well, and But what I'll tell you, having ordered a lot of bottles over the last year, and I'm not as many as some of the folks on here, so... You're always welcome to order a bottle and in the notes when you order it online, say, uh, hold it until the next outturn. So I usually wait until I have two or three bottles to ship and then that way the shipping comes down to, you know, about 10, 12 bucks a bottle as opposed to 30 bucks. Or you get a buddy that's in the club and... Yeah, I mean, you that, honestly, you, you pick the phone up and you instead of ordering online, order over the phone and one of three or four people are going to answer the phone. Ben's one of them and, man... They'll make it work. You, you, it's it's worth it. Trust me. I, it's I've been in it for three years now, four years. I mean, uh, you've been in for two, three years, yep. two, three. I, I, every, a lot of people on here. Number one, you can just pick up the phone and call, and Ben answers. He'll just talk to you about whiskey for forty-five minutes. <laughs> yeah, and because I do it, I'm and like. <laughs> or if you're in town, pick up the phone and be like, "Are you at the KB? office? Can I stop by and see?" Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah stop by, it. but be careful. Cause yeah. Ben don't have anything planned for after. <laughs> ben will put the hammer down, and next thing you know, you don't ben, know where you're at. We, we've got the tape for that. Right. But it, I, in all seriousness, it is a great club, and it, it's a lot of this, the same kind of people that you know are on here. They're all looking for good whiskeys. They all appreciate it. They're all very helpful. It, it's a good club. Yeah, and if you know your palate, and you know their their color scheme and their their color uh, their profile their profiles. You will generally be appreciative of what they provide in that color in their profile. And you You'll, can also find distilleries that don't normally come as a single malt scotch. Right. Distilleries that you'll be exposed to that you wouldn't have bought on a shelf or you right. can't find on a shelf. I mean, honestly, the Glen Rota stuff they've done is amazing. If you didn't, you've never had it before, you're like, what is this stuff? So then you might appreciate the regular bottles they have out there. Right. And the other thing to mention, too, I don't know if you did or not, but just the ABVs alone, you get like double the power out of these bottles. Hell yeah. 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 That's a lot of whiskey, 65%. You're not, not going to drink this as fast as you would at 43. Nope. <laughs> no way. Mm. So that's going to mm. last a while. I mean, it so. depends on the day. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. But not this one. Not this one. I usually so, find their pricing is about $10 a year. That's pretty fair. Until you get into the 25 pluses and then yeah. things start. And then it goes depending. up exponentially. Right. Yeah. It is yeah. what it is. So, KB, it's great to see you. I haven't heard yes. from you in over a week, great to man. See Where you, have KB. you been, we dude? We missed you, man. Working that you. hard? Killing me. Could we be. missed Whiskey Wednesday. Could be. So, guys, great bottle. Great Freaking bottle. fantastic bottle. Great I'm bottle. I'm so glad I that we got it. I cannot wait to see what happens to this bottle over time. Yeah. I really I think, think that will be good. I, th I think you're right. Let it open up a little more and pour a glass. Let it sit there for 20 minutes or something. Hopefully it doesn't over-oxidize because it's already, I think it's already pretty oxidized. Uh, I don't think it's going to. 
We'll see. I'll drink your share. No, I'm not willing to try it. No, no, no. So some of that burn may be off. That's a good question, Love it. Andrew. Glad we got it. Ben, while what? you're st oh, still on, um, we want to be in it on the next tasting panel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, we do. Of course, I'm not uh, a member. But so. this is a good pick. Well, that's your own fault. Well, no, see, that's the beauty of having no, three people that are. No, no, that's no, no. how that works, man. It's time to freaking pony up. Go to Leith, and you'll be standing outside. Ooh. <laughs> With Andrew. He's not welcome in here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know who we need to talk to instead of you? Dr. Scott. Dr. Scott should Dr. be great. Dr. Scott should be well, great. Fine. Is he, he around might be Maybe Dr. Scott well, is a member. He might he be. He might be. Go find him. All right, probably it. not. He's probably too tight. <laughs>
and, and so gotcha jerky. <laughs> <laughs> so even at room temperature, cast strength whiskey w may have a bit of a haze. Okay. Well, it doesn't look good on a shelf. No. So what they do is they put them through what, in many cases, is a Nero filter. And let me show you. And I'll a Nero filter. That, that I'll show you. And, and I will say I've not verified that all of them have this. But essentially what they do is they take cellulose, which is essentially a paper filter. And it can be anywhere from an eighth to a quarter inch thick. And they put them in th uh, this thing on the left, which is a big filter press. That these things, these industrial filter presses can filter up to 10,000 liters an hour. So oh, shit. They're designed to filter a lot. So this is not a bottleneck in manufacturing where you, where you have all these sheets of paper and they, they run the filter. And what essentially it is, if you look on the right, this is what's happening, is the liquid is coming in through the top. It goes through those sheets of paper, which are represented by the brown there, and they come out through the side. It, it this, reminds me of the filter on my furnace. It's exactly the same thing. It's the exact same it process. It looks just like the furnace filter. It's the exact same process. The, these are probably thicker and more and less porous than your air filter on your on your it's the filter on your the air filter on your carbon the, car, the on wow. your car and your house it's the exact same process it's a single pass filtration um, huh. everybody does it and so what they do is they do that at say 50 degrees or 60 degrees just to clarify your liquid that's not considered chill filtering it's not because they've not been chilled okay because chill filtering is typically at oh zero degrees Celsius or four degrees Celsius, something about freezing, or maybe in some cases even below, below freezing. To, and what that does is it really precipitates and flocks out all those fatty acids and um, uh, long chain esters. Those really come out of solution, but there's still, there's still a, a percentage of them that are marginally in solution at room temperature. So if they filter at room temperature or maybe 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Fahrenheit, they're still filtering out some of those materials. It clarifies your liquid, but it's not chill filtering. So there's Jeez. a fine line between chill filtering and filtering. It doesn't say not filtered. None of your whiskeys will say not filtered at all. Yep. So they're all filtered. They're all filtered. Now, to a some, degree. some of them will only put them through a screen, and you may see sediment in the bottle. Well, we've had bottles. Oh, I've we've seen, seen sediment. sediment. So, so, so this has sediment in it. In it. So you may see some sediment in the bottle. That maybe that especially was especially from older bottles. We've had some old bottles that were like exactly. floating all over them. And, I can't and, wait to open them. And that's likely what happened with that old Lafroy versus the new Lafroy. The new <laughs> Lafroy, while not chill filtered, is filtered at some stage at some level. So just to clarify, what does chill filtering do? Chill filtering will remove almost a hundred percent of those uh, particles and sut whatever. Uh, well, what happens is when it gets really cold. Um, and especially, well, it gets really cold, the fatty acids and the um, uh, long chain esters will precipitate and then those will come out of solution. Okay, so they'll precipitate and get caught by the filter, by the filter. while they're going through. So it's like they freeze oh, almost. They, and get, they, get yeah, they come out of solution and then and then we'll, they will and solidify catch the and, then, okay. and the filter will catch up. Okay. Some of those are out of solution. There, there's a certain solubility of those, of those compounds in the whiskey itself at any temperature. And so, if you so filter, you don't worry about those exactly, you filter them at, yeah. at you filter at room temperature. You remove some of those, but mostly you're getting rid of the particulates from the bet cask, the sawdust, those kinds of things that you might have. This so, guy. I yeah. just want to say that over time, I might not be a doctor's assistant, but I am getting close to being able to play one on YouTube. So, so that's what they. No, you're not. So, <laughs> so one thing I will recommend is go like to beer. so whiskey.com <laughs> actually has they did. He, it was like 2009, he did a, a horse, did a, an extensive study where he actually chill filtered like 12 different bottles. And then he, then they, he and a group sent them to 100 different whiskey connoisseurs across Germany. And they, they did a survey. Can you tell which one's chill filtered, which one's not chill filtered? You know, how, what's the quality of the whiskey? And they actually published it on their website, the, their study with this. And... Most people cannot tell the difference between chill filter and chill filter whiskey. Really? It's, they took the same bottle, like in Spring Make 18 year old, and some of these really fine whiskeys that were not chill filtered. He chill filtered them, and he, sh and he actually on the video he actually shows his process of filtering, and it's it's pretty solid. I mean, he did a pretty good job. I mean, he's a PhD. He knows what he's doing on, on research and things. So I, I I fairly trust his technique, and they published the results in full detail on his website, and. It, so the question is, does it matter if you chill filtered? 
And his study would say, at least in 2009, maybe not this as much key, as you this think. This is the key to the conversation right here. Maybe yeah. not as much as you think. Some people could tell. Some people couldn't. Um, and the, the question was, did it make a better whiskey or worse whiskey? It was like 40, 54% thought that the non-chill, or the non-chill filter was better. 46% thought that the chill filter was better. And so, so it's, it's really... So it's concept. within the margin of error it for your... It is within a margin uh, of error. Yes. So, so is this more of a, a marketing visual thing to make sure that, you know, or is it, is it really more of a particulate making sure that, you know, what I mean? Well, it's, it's a matter of getting your bottle clear. You want a clear bottle on the shelf. Right. You don't, so, want, you don't want haze in there. But They're, you're not going to taste the difference. So the Generally, people, no. Now, some super people with certain palates, and, and the other thing he noted I mean. was, most people won't detect. If it's peated, you're almost guaranteed not to test it. Or to taste it for if sure. It, if it's yeah. a he, if it's a heavily sherry whiskey, you're almost guaranteed not to taste it. But if it's a second fill bourbon, you might. So that's what he noticed in his study. This study is what? fantastic. Second Was there anything down. about the, so the, the like viscosity of the liquid or the mouthfeel? Well, I think it? that's a difference. Is when you have that's other really powerful components like a rich sherry or a smoke or a peat, it tends to hide all that. Yep. And so right. the, the nuances of that of that mouthfeel are fairly hidden by those other powerful whiskeys, or so powerful yeah. flavors. So hence why lower ABVs are more susceptible because you're probably not gonna get a yes. whole lot of different major flavors. Lower, lower ABVs for sure, blended whiskeys for sure will be uh, chill filtered because you want, because that, um, you want a super clear wick, liquid. Right, 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 that makes sense. Yeah. Interesting. Right. So, so yes, things are chill filtered, most are filtered. Now, the money is finding out which distillery filter with what. Is it a tight screen? Is it a cellulose fiber? Is it a two they micron the filter? Yeah. They all have their own deal. I don't blame them for wanting a clear. Everybody wants a clear bottle on the shelf. That's that's what you want. Now, if you look at this one, which we you can't see because it's the the backlit, there's a little bit of haze to that. That would be filtered out with with these big filter presses like you see. Interesting. So, so if cool. I like my room at let's say twenty degrees Fahrenheit, do I have to say it's chill filtered? Twenty degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> is below freezing, so yes. It is. <laughs> but that's what I would normally so, have my room temperature. So, so, so the limit, the limit, I think <laughs> what, I, what I've seen is about room. about four degrees Celsius. Below four degrees Celsius is chill filtered. That works out to like forty degrees Fahrenheit. All right. But if you if you come totally from Dunchow, so and he actually. Uh, Ralphie actually had a had a flask of whiskey that was pulled directly from a barrel. He was he had it in the room with him. It was cast strength and it was hazy as hell. I, I have a question because, and you may not know the answer to this. I don't know if you looked it up. I'm just going to put you on the spot. Fine. So let's say I've got a Dunnage house in you know Highland Park, mm -hmm. right? Way up north. It's, yep. And I'm rolling barrels out of that Dunnage house, and it's cold outside. Yeah, it is. Right. Do they have to let those barrels come up to room temperature before they can filter them? You know what I mean? If it's a non-chill filtered, no, because you know what I mean? If that barrel's the chill 30 degrees is, outside. Is you actively cool it to get it to Acid. essentially freezing. But if it's a 50 degree, 45 degree warehouse, put it through the filter, non-chill filter, baby. And some True. of those, Esther, some of those things might have already... Come out of solution. Come yeah. out of solution. So, so those, when you dump those barrels, if you dump a barrel at 45 degrees Fahrenheit, there's going to be some cloudiness in there, guaranteed. And huh. it will probably remove a lot of that. But All it's right. not, still not All right. so, I do, I do want to say before we forget, KB uh, gave us a nice super chat. I think it's because Dr. Scotch came in. I here. think it's what it was. I, oh, oh um, report. I don't, we don't have splash. anything. Just, just a little splash. Just a Drew, splash. Drew doesn't put bottles up on the bar. You uh, have to drink what we got. So I need to bring some bottles over. <laughs> Thank you, KB. It's great to see you. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers. Thank KB. KB. It's great to see you, brother. Mm-hmm. Mm. There's that tobacco. Well, I'm going to let that sip a little bit. Um, grape jelly. Awesome oh, information. I think is that that? It tastes like, like grape, grape jelly. Question. <laughs> is that that? Yeah. Oof. That's better as an oh. age. Oh. oh. That's great, man. Incredible. Great. Good job, um, man. Well, that was actually very informative, man. I feel like I'm... Uh, Slowly getting a Scotch PhD. See, it's very on the show. interesting stuff. I'm going to be assistant in no time, right? High tech. I feel High like more stuff. of a 
Maybe the, uh, the person Look, that dude. greets you when you come in the office. I so might I, be on vegetables now, but soon I'll be so on fries. So I will ask, ask you, we, we, we didn't get a chance to get this set up before we started here today. Go, to, go um, if you search on YouTube for emptying uh, a cask of whiskey, or empty a whiskey barrel, uh, there's a, a, a company called Peerless Whiskey. I think it's Peerless Whiskey. That has chips. a video when they opened their first barrel and they dumped it. This is like the company's first barrel that they emptied. They have a video of it, and they pop it off, they roll it over, and you see just this black garbage. Oh, I'm going to look that up. Like, I can't wait to drink that. And, and that and I, sh I sent a picture. <laughs> you should, you should and all the it, investors are like, what the? You should the? put it in the comments. <laughs> what did you do tomorrow? Okay. Yeah. Why does it look like that? Right. Yeah, it, I mean, that's what that's the black, that's the char coming out of the barrel. And these are brand, these are, this is bourbon. Meanwhile, so they were like, show. I thought we were making vodka. Right. No, no, no. It's, all right. It's, uh, it's uh, I'm going to guess they in schedule. We'll get, thanks for oh. coming, Dr. Scotch. Appreciate you. Cheers. Wow, I need to adjust my hat. That was really used, awesome. I'm not used to being on the front of the bar. <laughs> what, what happened here? <laughs> what we got? I don't know what happened. Uh, what well, right we're, we're, we're at the last segment. We've got about uh, eight minutes left of the show before the patron after show kicks off. Um, but we've got to do our last segment, which is our, our blind tasting. So I was talking to, to Mark about this this week, and he said, hey, you know, I've got a, I've got a blind that we can do. So I'm like, all right, bring it over. So Bring it. So we've been doing that... Um, Guess the dram thing, which I think is fun, but it's been a little hard. And I thought, you know what? This is a lot easier. This is fun, yeah. What, so. are, what are we doing? What's, what's this so bottle? You don't know. Tell us what this bottle is, Mark. I'm not telling you. <laughs> so, nobody knows. There's How come there's five glasses? I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm just This asking. is my, uh, All right. you hope. What's in the other That's his personal one. Yeah, this is this is this one. <laughs> I hope you know the difference. <laughs> is that, is no, that the... I gave you... I, that's yep. mine. So name is got you right. That's I got, my own. I had to fight find it for my hat. Get it back. Why well, you gotta be that way, man? Cause you want that one, that the blind. Do I? Yeah. This Ooh. smells light on the nose. Are smells. you sure this is, is this scotch? So it doesn't smell like scotch. I'm not gonna give anything away. Oh. Oh, so he posted your video. There you go. Nice thing. Oh thing yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you, Steve. A. <laughs> rinse out. Of this is um wow. char. I've been sitting on this this sample for probably Three months. Um, oh. Hey, thanks, Zach, for the super chat. Woohoo! Appreciate Zach. you, brother. I was saving it for a special oh, guest. I've had this before. But that <laughs> guest is n not scheduled and don't know when they will be scheduled. So I thought, you know what? We needed a blind. And this is a good one to do. Ooh, this smells like old Pulteney. Do they know? Um, I don't get any of that brangy seaside or anything. So this is really light. Okay. It's light, really... It's got some nice fruit notes to it. Yep. Like light fruit notes. Like uh, like fresh apple or... It is a single malt. I will give you that much. You can almost get strawberry, but not quite. Um, uh, space side? Very perfect. Negative on the space side. It's Negative high, on the space side. Then. Gotta be a highland. Boy, I get Super those honey. Fruity, I get those fruity notes on the nose. Light, very light. Oh, light, sweet, light. I mean, it's almost like a so, glimmer honey sweet. No, um, it's so floral. really honey in yeah. the back too. Yeah. In the finish. Light. Well, ABV's not almost too like high. a. It's it's very subtle. Like, everything's subtle, like a Ball Blair subtle. Mm. It's mm. really tasty. That's nice. I get a I get a nice I get a nice tint of uh, maltiness in it. But the honey's there. Um, honestly, this this is a scotch, right? This is what if somebody's never had a scotch and they were like, "What scotch tastes like?" You know, well, there's a, a breadth of variety of scotch, but you know what? This is probably 
what scotch well, is. This, <laughs> th this to me reminds me of the one that people are like, oh, I don't like scotch. It's all smoky and stuff. And then you pour them this, and they're like, oh, but this is really good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Th this is that the, the right. light yes. end of scotch. This is not the heavy uh, leather and. It's, okay. it's okay. really like mix, mixing a, a very floral honey with some warm water. Yeah. Like it's just got all of that sweet. It's exactly what floral, it is. Almost like honey tea. And, and it just coats your mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a. What do you yeah. get on the ABV? Mm -hmm. Low, 40, 43, 46 maybe tops. Not hot. Is this a new bottling? It's got to be at least 46. Mm. So yeah, it's, been around, way it's been around 40. for a bit. You say way above 40. You said at least 46. At least 46. You said 43, 46. Sean? Unless it's a young whiskey and then it could be 40. I'm going to. On the front end, I want to say 43, but on the back end, I think it's a 46. Yeah. All right. It gets a little but hotter I'm, I'm, on the finish than it was on the initial. It is a single malt, Tom, and we've just uh, we've said 43. it is not a space side. So um, it's a Highland. I will divulge they've all guessed. We, I, he said uh, honestly. It's 46. I, you guys were all in and on it. Oh, I think, really? Yeah, it's 46%. I'm not good at that. That's I, great. Right. I will say there is one Lowland distillery that I have had that... That might fit the, the, the bill? Mm -mm. But I don't Highland. think you would have it on your bar. It's too heathery. It's got, it's, it's <laughs> this is not my bar. This was sent to me. It is light and this sweet. Is, uh, and this is, this was not on this my bar. This reminds me of an OP15. It's not Glenfiddich 18. Um... This is not no, something not, that I had on my it's bar. No way. It's, it's Bobby no way Jason's Glen Mo 10. No. Nope. Um, it's not Ball Blair 15 either. Nope. It does um, not feel like an old Poland either. Drew's no. right. Brian. It is a Highland. It is not. It, obviously, you guys knew it wasn't an Iowa. Um, it's not Sweet. a Lowland. This is a Highland. I'll, I'll give you that much. So that, that narrows is down. Is it an older Ball Blair? Not really. <laughs> I mean, somewhat. It is. It is. So Sunday evening Scotch said Ball Blair 90. I think they would have got that yeah. one, Mike. Yeah. It's not nearly that good. Um, we've put a few of those bottles down and would love to put another one down, KB. Heck yeah. <laughs> That's a dead zebra right there. <laughs> it's it's um, warm and... and Wolfburn's a good guess, Tom, but that's not right. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. So is it um, multi like an OP? Uh, is it north of Speyside? It's a pretty good guess, Tom. You're in the, the, the um, geographical area, if I might say. It's um, it's oh, it's a it's a freaking. Well, there's not a whole lot of nice distilleries up in that neck of the woods. No, there's not. Highland Sean. Park, Scapa, Wolfburn, Old Pulteney's up Old north. Pulteney. Well, it doesn't taste like an Old Pulteney. It's, it's that H one. Starts with H. Old no cake. I get um the non H statement one. I get malt. I, it's very smooth. I hate to use that word because everybody beats it up, but it is really. What's it called? It's just Pulteney. a very. Starts with H. Um. Which one? Easy drinking scotch. 46% is, oh. is perfect, I think, for it. Is, I know it's a uh, Brienne San Dalwini, no. Not a Klein Leash either. No Scapa. I'm, I'm sticking with no Old Pulteney. No Oban. What I'm, did you I'm say? I'm sticking with Old Pulteney. All right, so Alejandro says Old Pulteney 12. It is not the 12. No, it's it's a cutter. Hutter. Hutter. No. It is not no. the 12. Because that no, one's no, peated. peated. Yeah, it's is not. it peated? Yeah. Okay. Drew guessed Old Pulteney out of the gate. I, we had to take this out a little me. bit, Mike. It must be a not in each statement, Old Pulteney. So it's an Old Pulteney, boys. Really? But what? 15. No. no. Okay, then I don't know. It's uh, it's Steph Ridgeway's favorite, if I do recall. 100? Oh, it it's the... Uh, no, it's an age statement. 15 was the... Oh. Pretty sure she said you couldn't get this one but in travel retail. She's not the one that sent me this. I was saving this to drink with her on the show. We just haven't gotten her on the show. So travel 17 retail. is close. Oh, is it the 19? No. Or 18. 15's close too. 16. 16. Old Pulteney 16. Old Pulteney 16. Really? This was sent to me by Bobby H. Navigator's the other one I was thinking of, guys. You're right. There you go. Bobby, if you're still See, on, I finally no drank grind. it. Um, I no finally decided C to share it. I told you I would share it. Super with duper dummies. sweet. 
So, um, how, how'd you know? Go, oh, there's no Brian. There's no. He, I mean, came out of the game. he came out of the gate and said, Oh, pull. And I was like, God damn, I got a freaking. I'm not giving it to him like that. <laughs> that was a lucky guess. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> Has some women. I mean, I was trying. You did good. Um, it is old Pulteney 16, uh, Leanne. Hmm. See? He throws us off the scent. That's what he does. He's, he's like, what are you talking about? We gotta stretch this out for four more minutes. What's that over there? <laughs> Squirrel! <laughs> well, I wasn't gonna say, Jew's like, that's old Pulteney. I'm like, well, so much for the fun. <laughs> the hell? I thought you were supposed to be a dumb. I said, I said I'll pull the 15. I was so one then, year off. Well, we can't just drink it? <laughs> it is good, though. Man. It is good. nice. It's, it's, it is so a it, it doesn't have that. You said I usually, maltiness first. I usually get a hint of, of, a, like, briny of, of a briny tone, and this is Don't all you have a 21 sweet. Back there? I do. It's not. The, the brininess is not there. I would have, open, I would have bet on Ball Blair world. long before old Pulteney on this So we, we could try an OP-17 and see what it tastes like. 17? Sure. He's got it. So Bob sent me three or four samples months and months ago. And over the few months, I have brought them over and we've done blinds on them. And this was the last one. I was really holding on because I thought it would be fun to do it with Stefan because sure. uh, I know she's a big fan of the 16. Um, just didn't happen. And so we needed something to do a blind with. And I'm like, you know what? They have no idea that I've even got this in the bar. This is not something that, that any Thanks, of us have. Michael. So what It's all about performing under totally, pressure. So it totally just jinxed me. So it's good that uh, Sean, up by pressure, Sean's by doing the, the next. Uh, yeah. I'm not tasting. worried about it. You're going to do just fine. It's fine. Mm, man, it's really it's good. good, though. It's good. It's, it's wonderful. All right, it's guys. a really good It's glass. a good dram. Um, good fun show. So what's on the horizon? We've got, Let me, hey, let's tease. Let's, let's pour some juice oh, bit. What? I can't reach him. I'm, I'm vertically challenged. You need a boost? We got um, a little bit. <laughs> this is what you call. We've got 10 of these Can up here. Can you put your hand right here? <laughs> I'm lift you like a cheerleader. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, easy trigger. We have PR responsibilities here. So, we've got 10 of these bottles. 10 of them. And we are doing the whiskey mystery style. They're labeled. Oh, shit. So you can pull us off and figure out which one is. Oh, B12. I'm going to try that oh, one. B12. So we've got something fun coming up. Mark, do you want to talk about what's going on? Yeah. So uh, way back when, it's been a month or it's been so, a month. Um, Drew posted to, uh, on Discord for you all to chime in on your top 10 whiskeys under 50 bucks. Now, mm. you got to be a little bit lenient in different markets. Prices vary a little bit. So we didn't really, we weren't stringent on it. Uh, because it may be well, $50. Well, we weren't stranging on what was 50 bucks in our market. Right, exactly. Necessarily. So anyway, yeah. we took the results of that, and we have the top 10 that you selected. All right? So those top 10 bottles are now all put in here. Over the course of the next probably three or four weeks, we are going to line these up and do it sort of a bracket challenge blind, and we are going to verify. We're going to judge who wins. And so at the end of all this, we'll have a ranking based on our uh, what we taste, but we're also going to share it with our review scores from those bottles. So, are you guys right? Are our reviews right? Or are the bot? You know what happens when the bottles go head to head? So, um, I th I'm really excited about the fun of it. We are going to be shooting the sort of intro that lays out the ten bottles, give a little bit of information about them, and then we'll go right into the. Uh, the shoot off, I guess we'll call it. I'm not sure if we've given it a name. So each bottle, we're, we're not exactly sure. We're still kind of finalizing the bracket piece of it, but basically one bottle will win and it will go back up and re enter the next bottle. We're going to get an X on it. Right. Something. The winner. Number yeah. one. I feel like we should call it Thunderdome. Thunderdome? Thunderdome. I like Thunderdome. <laughs> So a uh, shout out to, to Whiskey Dome. Mystery for the we're, we're following Whiskey Mystery's sort of style, you, yep. know, you know, masking the bottles, and that's kind of cool. Definitely give him some props, them some props, I should say. Um, but uh, exciting! It's going to be fun because this is what you guys voted on the the top. You know what I mean? The best. Um, it's a pretty good breadth and variety of whiskeys. I did some yep. sort of research and notes just sort of so we can go down at some basic information that y'all probably know, but want to do it collectively. You know, the ABVs, whether it's a single malt, whether it's a blend, the maturation. Um, and I think when you look at these top 10, they do fall out and say, well, you know, people really tend towards this or they really tend towards that. Or you can look at the ABV and be like, well, people really seem to like this ABV the most. So yeah. there's some fun stats to look at it. We'll have some fun. 
I think we'll be a little surprised doing this to find out what tops out. I'm excited. And then, and then look at our reviews. So, so 10 fun. bottles enter. One bottle. So Damn these right. are voted by Discord, by patrons who... who our whiskey tube subscribers, Discord, all those people. So basically we had a spreadsheet out there that put out there. And the, the, the Discord people to get to? And, well, no, anyone. We okay. put it on, on YouTube. So um, we had, I mean, we'll talk about this on our video, but we had basically over 200 bottles that were submitted in this you know, 10 challenge mm -hmm. per person. And we comprised it. I did analytics. I did Power BI. All this fun, geeky stuff. He did. No and, and, and we came out with the top 10 based on votes. We had a few ties, but we're basing them off of, you know, what we think in order. So, yep. so also, what's going on next Wednesday? Oh, yeah. What is going on next Wednesday? The October 21st. Dummy versus dummy. Dun, dun, dun. So, you guys uh, got to tune in for that. Yeah. Um, long story short, Ben reached out to us a few weeks ago, wanted to do something, um, and really wanted to do something with the, the test dummies and the Scotch 4 dummies. Um, we all have a great relationship with the SMWS, and uh, he pitched an opportunity and said, do you guys want to try to do a sort of a blind face-to-face -face. Face -face challenge with it? So we were like, yeah, we're in. And uh, we would had a call. So with, you're flying to leave. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I wish. No. So here, at the end of the day, what's most exciting about this, Ben is going to send blind samples to us and blind samples to them. And we're going to do sort of a Zoom live one hour challenge where Ben is going to basically, you know, have the rules laid out and the scoring laid out. And one set of dummies is going to win this challenge. I can tell you that the... The uh, the spoils of victory are basically bragging rights because we and the sketch test dummies all agreed that we don't want the victories. What we're going to do is take what was going to be given to the winner and we are going to give it to our fans. Nice. So we actually have some pretty amazing prizes that we're putting. Yes. I don't want to spoil it right now, but some good you, you guys need to make sure that you tune in for this event because not only is it going to be epic. But to the winner is all of you guys as well. Right. So Wednesday, October 21st, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6, 6 p.m. Pacific. Pacific, right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's go it's going to be fun. But <laughs> honestly, the folks that are watching, um, we're going to figure out how we're going to give our portion of the victory <laughs> that the spoils away. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a good time, honestly. I, I assume that there's going to be some sort of traveling trophy, right? Oh, I, you know that's a really good idea. I think, I think I think we should actually. Ben, you need to buy I a love the idea. We should have a traveling bottle trophy of blind champion whiskey tubers, yep. and that we are the we are the reigning champions. And whoever wants to challenge us, bring it. Bring it all. Hey, might as well. I mean, honestly, the video we put together last night that we posted today, I, we we called yeah, out a fun. ton of you because I, you're all a part of this. Honestly, we we learned just as much from you guys as hopefully you're learning from us. Uh, it's 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 gonna be a good time. Tune in. We'll have more about it. I'm sure we'll have a few more videos out there to uh, have a little fun with. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> yeah, all right, guys. I'll raise toast. Thank you for watching tonight. Appreciate you guys. Cheers, we'll guys. See you guys. Cheers. In a week. Cheers, guys.